Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers. So in today's video we're going to be doing a bit of a Timo haul and actually this video will be split into two so this will be the first video of course and then you'll see the next video very shortly because there's going to be quite a bit of stuff so I thought it'd be better to split it into two videos rather than cramming it all into one and there's a lot of things that I'm very excited about so I thought we'd have a look at it all together. Now if you're not aware last year I also did a video with Timo where I basically got to pick out some things from the website they sent them to me and I made a video sharing it with you. And that was pretty successful, so when they reached out again, I thought, why not repeat? So I'm really excited to see these things in real life and, of course, share them with you. Now, I do remember I did get to pick all these things, but, of course, I haven't seen them in real life. Plus, I don't have the best memory, so I probably forgot most of it by now. But anyway, why don't we just jump right into it? So these are the things we're going to be looking at in this video. So as you can see, we have a few different kinds of things. So we have beads, there's some blanks. We also have some tools here. So I think we should just dive right in. Just before we do, though... I just remembered there will of course be links in the description box down below along with any relevant information so of course you can always check that out otherwise I think we should just dive right in so let me just push them out of the way so we can kind of focus on one thing at a time so let's just start in a comfortable place shall we in my case that means beads and let's just start with the ones that kind of catch my eye the most as well so these will be a squirrel moment for me if you know what that means so anything purple really is a squirrel moment and will distract me whenever I see it. But I have these four strands. Now they are two different kinds of beads. So we have actual sujolite beads. And then we have jade stones that are dyed to look like sujolite. So let's just unwrap them here. Got the first ones. And they're so lovely and delicious looking. So we have six mil and then eight mil. Those are definitely my two most used sizes and you'll probably see that repeated throughout most of the beads that I have. I think I used to use the eight mil the most, but I actually think it's changed to being six mil that I use the most now. So let's have a bit of a closer look. So I'll say these ones here are the Sujolite beads and here's the jade that's dyed to look like it. Let's just have a look at these. Again, it's the same with them. That's six and eight mil and they look just so delicious. All that purpleness, different tones and they're kind of mixed within the individual beads. I just love things like this. And of course, especially the colour. And I just really love gemstones as beads because they have just another dimension to them and a different feel. It's just almost as if they got like an inner glow these. And I really love that. So that's the Sujolite beads. Then we have the jade that's dyed. As you can see, a very similar colour. And also really lovely and delicious looking. So you can see a difference just to show you them side by side and kind of the look to them. But of course, they are very similar. So these are a little bit more kind of inner glow like. Whereas these are a bit more solid, but they're both very beautiful in their own right. And I will definitely use all of these. You even in the studio like, have actually a bit of blue here and there that makes this in really well. So I'm very pleased with them. I really like in that gemstone. I haven't actually seen that in real life before, but I definitely think that's going to go on my list of favorite ones. So these are very lovely and I'm very happy with them. We're starting off strong. Hopefully that will continue. But what should we then do? Let's try a bit of blue. Here we have Optimized Tiane Stone. I'm not sure what that is, I've never heard it before, but I just really thought it looked lovely. Again, it has this kind of inner glow to it and a lovely variation in the blue color there that all still go really well together. And you also get a nice texture within the beads that kind of vaguely show through. And just to think of it, these two, oh, they look really lovely together. Oh my goodness, that's actually beautiful. I knew they would go together, but that's actually really lovely, even better than I thought. They almost kind of belong together, those two colours here. Definitely, they would be really lovely in a project together. So these are really lovely as well. And I love opening things in this way where you kind of have multiple different things. And as you open them, you kind of discover, oh, wait a minute, I opened that earlier. And they would actually go really well together, like I just did. <laughs> Whereas if you just get them separately in different shops, you might not think of it. Unless you actually have them out next to each other at the same time. Anyway, let's switch it up a bit, shall we? So I think next, um, let's do a tool. So I did order this one and it's a pair of pliers. Now I actually already have a pair of pliers like this, but they're not in the best condition. So I kind of thought I could do with a refresh. And what it is, is nylon jaw pliers. So basically you have a pair of more or less flat nose pliers, but they have nylon jaws instead of just the metal jaws like usual. And when you use them, it protects the wire that you're using them on against the metal on the pliers there, so it shouldn't mar and scratch it. So I've needed a new pair of these for quite a while and they look like this, so just nice and basic. And they even come with extra 
tips there so you can swap them as you can see that one was loose but you literally just pop them on and take them off when they're kind of used up and then put on some of the fresh ones. Now the only challenge is to keep these safe and remember that I have them and then keep them so I can find them next time that I need them but I'll figure something out. Next I think we need to look at a cabochon that I did get as well. So I love cabochons and I do have quite a few but I feel like it's something you can never have too much of. Different shapes, sizes, colours, anything like that. So this is a Labradorite cabochon and it's always very kind of hit and miss with these ones. Let me just get you a little bit closer. Like regardless it's always beautiful but with Labradorite what you get are these internal colours and glows just kind of beaming out from within the gemstone. Sometimes you get stones that don't really have any of that so of course it's still beautiful but the special thing about Labradorite is definitely that internal colour and glow that just kind of shines out. And you can get blues, you can get purples, pinks, goldens. So it's really quite the variety and first impressions of this, this is looking very lovely. So you can see the kind of stone is more or less just grey from first look. But then when you start to move it in the light, you get all this beautiful colour. We have purples there. Purple is actually the most rare in the Labradorite. But you then have pinks, you have some golden down here. And then let's just flip it to the back and have a look. And that's just covered in pink and purple. Absolutely beautiful. It's just so mesmerising looking at things like that. That's why I love gemstones. And I can sometimes just sit and stare at them for ages. And you'll kind of almost see something different every time. Just look at all that colour. It's absolutely beautiful. So this is definitely a lovely one. And it's also quite an unusual shape. I kind of thought I'd do that on purpose. Because I tend to steer towards oval mostly shapes. Sometimes rounds and squares. But mostly ovals. And I do sometimes want to branch out and use some other shapes as well. So I kind of thought this would be a good one to do that with. And it turns out the stone itself is absolutely lovely as well. So this is definitely going to look beautiful in a piece. Probably wrapped with wire I'm thinking. And it's actually also very thick so you get a lot of stone there. You get high edges that you can then obviously use wire or anything else to kind of capture the stone with. There's many different ways and options to do that. I have loads on my channel so check that out. It is one of my favourite things to do to capture cabazons with wire, macrame, kumihimo or anything else. Wire crochet is actually one of my favourites as well. So that is also another success. Next let's do some more beads. So I got a couple of strands of beads that are basically my staple ones. I use them a lot and I kind of feel like I can never have too many of them. I have them in all sorts of different sizes, colours and faceted or non-faceted. Also a few different shapes and it's quartz. And they're definitely one of my favourite gemstones as well because they're so versatile. They come in so many different colours, sizes, shapes and they do also tend to have more generous holes compared to a lot of other gemstones. So I got three different colours just because I wanted to see what they were like and they're all faceted so they have loads of sparkle on them which in my opinion you can never have too much of. So we have three different colours. We have the purple tone, there's the rainbow, it's absolutely lovely. Oh, look, just look at that sparkle, this is beautiful. And then we have the blue and these are all three mil and I just wanted to kind of check out and see what they were like from there. And they are definitely very, very beautiful. I'm very happy with them. And you can see why I love the facet so much. That sparkle is just absolutely unmatched and beautiful. And they really add so much class, I think, as well to any piece you use them in. And of course, colour, depending what colour you choose to use. So I'm very happy with them. They will definitely get used up. And I do also use the 3mm sides a lot. Moving on from the quartz, I think we should look at some of the blanks that I got. So... I do some laser videos here and there, if you've noticed on my channel, where you basically can use the laser to engrave on things or cut things. So I wanted to try out some of the blanks to engrave on too. So I've got two here. So first of all, I have these little puzzle pieces. I did actually get this previously and I really, really liked it. I just basically want to see if this was the same because the previous one was such nice quality and... I only had a couple but I really did also want to get more so this is what they look like. So they're really nice and smooth and shiny and got a decent thickness there. Uh, they already come on a little keyring thing but of course you don't have to keep them on that. I just think they make such cute necklaces because especially if you have a look if I can just try and do that they actually fit together so I think they make a perfect couples necklace set. So for instance, one can have one piece and one the other and maybe you can engrave initials onto them or something like that. I think that's such a nice idea. So these I'm definitely happy with. I then also got a dog tag that's basically coated in blue and that looks like this. So that is really shiny and lovely as well. Very nice quality. This will definitely be really nice to engrave onto, especially because what you then do is actually remove that blue layer so you're going to get down 
and then get the silver stainless steel showing through. And that's going to be a really nice contrast against each other, so that will really stand out. And it already has a little bail on it as well, so you don't even need to add a jump ring or make your own bail. So I am very pleased with that one, and it's covered on both sides, so you don't have to worry about front or back or anything. So these are very nice little blanks I got as well. Can't wait to use them in a laser. Next, let's just look at some more stones because I saw these and I kind of felt like I couldn't resist trying them and see what they actually look like in real life. So these are basically some cabochons as well because they don't have any holes, but they have far more of an actual kind of gemstone shape that you would set into something. And they're pretty sizable as well. And what they actually are is the color changing. And that's what really caught my interest and attention. And also why I thought I have to just see that in real life and see what it's like. And obviously if it's true. Now, of course, they don't just randomly change color, but this is what they look like. So originally they have this kind of orangey, almost amber color to them. Probably better see it actually with my hand, not behind it. And they have clarity to them and very lovely shape and faceting. And then on the back here you can see you have that point which is why you would normally do like a nice setting. So that's the largest one, that's an oval one. Then we have a teardrop shaped one. Again, you get sparkle from them because of all that faceting. Again, you have the point on the back and the front is flat. And then this is the third one, also a teardrop shape, but slightly smaller than the other one. So just side by side, they look like that. And you can already see the kind of different colors within it as you're moving it in the light. And I'm pretty sure that it's under different light settings that you'll get the color changing. So obviously if you go outside after being inside or the other way around or something like that. But regardless, they're beautiful just as they are as well. And will make a really lovely piece in whatever setting you choose to put it in. So this is quite big, so I'll definitely use this for a pendant, I think. And possibly the same for this or earring, but obviously you only have one unless you buy two. I didn't in this case, but this one, the smallest teardrop shape, would be really lovely for quite the statement ring. You can make a setting for that and then obviously make it into a ring with a ring band. And then because of that large flat surface on the top and the facets around the edges, it will just really catch attention, that's for sure. So they are very beautiful. I'll try and see if I can catch some footage of the color changing, but otherwise, this is what they look like. Very beautiful as well. They'll definitely be used and hopefully be set in a very elegant setting of some sort. Probably wire work, I will say. So I thought I just had to go and have a look at these color changing stones in daylight compared to me being inside under lamps and see if they actually change and if they do, how they change and what colors you get. Now under LED light, it's supposed to be this orangey color that you've seen already, but when you then take it to daylight, it goes completely purple and that is so beautiful. And I love the whole concept of just color changing anyway. So it's almost like you're getting more than one thing within the same thing. Plus it's just kind of almost magical. So anyway, daylight, you then get it fully purple. Now what I also tried is then being by the window so you get the daylight, but then turning on the lights inside on at the same time. And what ended up happening is that basically both things were almost competing with each other. So you got both the orangey color and the purple color at the same time. Just distribute it randomly within the stone. And that is a complete third look and also really beautiful. So I'm very pleased with these as well. They're very beautiful and they definitely do change color like they state they do. Personally, obviously the purple is my favorite, no surprise. But I'm definitely looking forward to using these probably in some wire work. I think it's going to make some really elegant pieces. Now next, I have a box here and I don't really remember what's in this. So I think we just need to open it up and have a look. My first thought is that it was some kind of tool, but I'm not entirely sure. Again, is that bad memory? <laughs> Let's try and get into it so we can find out if I can cut straight. We have a gap through. There we go. Let's try and open that up. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, these are some of what I was most excited about because I saw that on the website. I've never seen anything like this before and I knew straight away I just had to get them and try it out because this is something right up my alley. I've always been very fascinated with obviously anything gemstone related but always had a fascination with the whole the raw gemstones and kind of finding them, digging for them and then working with them after you find them of course. I've always been very fascinated with them and had have had kind of a bit of a secret dream to try it myself obviously it's not something you just do there's a lot to it but anyway what these two are are basically little stones that you crack open yourself and then inside should be some lovely hopefully druzy so i thought that was really cool and actually i think this makes a really good present idea as well oh wow that's interesting there's actually something inside but obviously these have never been opened 
but there's naturally something inside that's kind of making a bit of a noise. And that one as well. Ah, interesting. So, obviously you'll need to use some tools to crack these open, but I'm sure most people will have something they can use. I'll see about trying to do that and then adding some footage and of course find out what it is inside. Probably just some loose stone of some sort. But I was really excited about these because it just satisfies a little bit of that urge to kind of want to be a gem hunter. <laughs> and like I said, I think it's a really good present idea. It's a bit of an activity, but hopefully you then get something beautiful out of it afterwards. So this is something very different and unique. I think, like I said, I've never seen anything like this before anywhere. But now that I have, I kind of want to go hunting for more and see what else I can find like this and pretend to be a bit of a gem hunter. <laughs> So, since I'm super excited to crack these open, let's head to the kitchen and just get that done, shall we? So we can actually see what they look like inside, because that's obviously the exciting part. Now, obviously, I'm not professional or anything, so we just used a few tools that we had handy. So we brought out a screwdriver and then a hammer, and then I wanted to try and be the one that actually cracked them open, because obviously I'm very excited about the whole gemstone hunter thing. So I started out giving it a couple of what I thought was some pretty good wax, but nothing really was happening. So what we ended up doing was actually swapping places because I didn't really seem to be able to do it. <laughs> Maybe I was a little bit too nervous about it as well. So like I said, we swapped. So I ended up holding the camera instead of my husband. And he was then the one that ended up cracking them open. He can definitely get some harder wax in there than I can. <laughs> Now what we were a little bit worried about was the stones kind of moving around while we were whacking them. So what you maybe saw was we actually add some blue tack to the bottom to kind of get it to stay in place just as much as possible while we were whacking it. Now he did end up swapping that out for a clamp later on, which ended up working quite well because you kind of needed a third hand to hold it while you then use the tools to crack it open. But then after a couple of whacks he then managed to break through it and it was just kind of a few holes where the tool specifically was placed. And then he worked his way around to kind of get it to crack all the way around so we can kind of split it open and have a look and see what inside the crystal cave and the first one was really beautiful so that was basically sparkles all around and I love that so I'm very happy with that. Now with the other one we just tried to do the same thing and this one was actually very different so they're both kind of just white crystal but the second one was actually really matte and actually I ended up loving that because it makes them so different from each other so you don't just end up with kind of two very similar pieces. They are actually very different from each other and they're both very beautiful. This is where I kind of wish I could just shrink down in size and become miniature and then just walk inside of it and then just basically be surrounded by crystal and sparkleness. <laughs> but of course that's not possible. But honestly I'm actually really pleased with these and they ended up working out really well. It was a fun little activity. Like I said I think these would actually make really good presents at least for someone that's into gemstones like me. But then this is what they look like inside. So since we just did some gems let's have a look at a tool. So this is a tool that most people are probably familiar with. I've always known about it but I've never actually owned one so I kind of thought maybe it's about time because it could come in handy for some things. Let's just again break through the plastic. So it's a wire jig and it basically helps you shape wire into obviously whatever shape you want it to be and you can obviously do that freehand which is what I normally do but sometimes I think it could be quite handy to have something like this that helps you first of all make the shape and maybe make it more symmetrical or more exactly how you want or also if you're making more than one at a time Making it symmetrical by eye and freehand can sometimes be a little bit challenging. So that's another reason why I think something like this could be quite handy. So we have the jig and let's get inside all the way, shall we? Actually, this is the back. You can kind of see here the purpose. You have the base that you then put pegs into and then you can shape the wire around that however you want to. And then you can also make little templates and things like that. So if you then created a design with it, that you really like and you want to keep for the future instead of having to keep the pegs on there and of course only be able to use for that design. You can make like a template and then you can just then reposition the pegs in the same way so you can always go back and make the same design if you really like it that you've already done before. So here's the actual base. You can see all these little holes is then where you put in all these pegs and they actually have different sizes so they're all round but you can see here we have little tiny ones. But we then also have some medium ones and some bigger ones. So you can make a lot of variety in the designs that you use it for. Of course, don't want to lose any of these. So I think I'm going to keep this plastic bag to keep them in. If I don't lose them all already. <laughs> Let's just hunt for them. One, two, and three. I think that's it. Otherwise, hopefully they'll show up. <laughs> anyway, maybe I should just take a couple out just to show you. So the point is, like I said, you have these pegs 
and one end is the same regardless what size the other end is and they're the ones that you put through and put them down through the holes there create whatever design you want to and then you can use them to bring your wire around and make whatever shape and design that you want so it's a really clever tool I've just never really thought before about getting it I've always just kind of done everything freehand but like I said it could be useful for a lot of different things so I thought it was about time that I get one considering how long I've been making jewelry <laughs> anyway those are the pegs and you also get a paper here that actually tells you some designs you can do as you can see it tells you how to place some of the pegs and then how to bring the wire around to make a certain design and this is what I meant when I said about templates you can make so you already have some here but then you can also go through and make your own so some of the blank space you can just make your own or you have a fully blank one you can copy it and reprint it and then obviously just start making your own templates as well so that's definitely quite a handy tool oh yeah I forgot about that it also comes with these little plastic pieces let me just take that out just to show you these are also for the little pegs so what you do is you place your pegs where you want them to go of course you don't have to then use these but what can be helpful Oh, there was one missing, ha, <laughs> found you. Is to then on the back, use these little plastic tubes and place them over the underside of the peg here. And basically that fastens them in place so they won't move around or fall out. So you can see they're a lot more stable and they're definitely not gonna fall out as well. So that is also an option. And you also then won't get all that rattling as well, which might be a little bit annoying when you're working with it. But anyway, that's how you use it. So let's pack that away again. Make sure we we'll keep all these pegs especially safe so we don't lose any of them again. Now we then only have one thing left for this video here and those are a couple of strands of beads and these are really lovely as well. So I always like and am attracted to things like this. I love multicolored strands in general for a couple of reasons. I find that first of all the colors on the strands always go together so you can literally use them as they are in a project so you get multiple colors in the same project but it works because they work already on the strand of course or you can go through each individual strand and pick out what color you want and just use that if you want to. So you've got multiple ways of using multicolored strands and I really do like that. Mostly I tend to use them just as they are on the strand. Occasionally I will pick one out if I feel like it's getting a bit repetitive. But for me most of the time that's why I like multicolored strands is to use them more or less as they are. Because like I said they always look really good together and will work brilliantly in any project. So these are two, I got again 6mm and 8mm. Some of my most used sizes, like I said, and these are really lovely. So there's quite an earthy tone to this, I feel, because it's very natural colours. Obviously, you got blue for the sky, you got brown for the earth, you got green for plants, you got pink for flowers. This is all sorts in here, and it just really looks lovely together. And it's got quite a romantic feel to it, I think. So they are very beautiful as well, and I'm definitely going to use them in a project. Probably, like I said, just as they are on the strand, more or less. So multiple colours in one. So these are all the things that we looked at in this video. Some delicious gemstone beads, a couple of tools that'll be really useful, some stainless steel blanks, some cabochons and stones, and then the raw gemstones you gotta hack into yourself and become a little gem hunter. I'm very happy with all this and I most definitely will be using it all. And I'll be honest, I cannot stop looking at those purple beads. They just look so freaking delicious. Anyway, like I mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a part two to this video where we go through the rest of the things that Timo sent me. And a reminder, there will be links in the description box down below as well, like I mentioned, and the useful info. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed having a peek at all these things along with me. And I definitely can't wait to use some of the stuff. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.